Welcome to the From Concealment Podcast, the show for firearm enthusiasts who like to shoot, train, carry, and compete. Get ready for some shooting and sight, firearm and accessory reviews, and of course, insight on concealed carry. And now broadcasting from behind enemy lines in the From Concealment studio, it's Pete Mitchell and Dan Sams. Hey, Freedom Nation, this is Pete Mitchell. And I am Dan Sams. And uh, yeah, we're, we're rocking some, some gear today. Yeah. You know, all it took to get Safe Life Defense to get off their butt and mail me my gear was we ripped on them on the podcast on Monday. We need to do some more ripping, man. Come Friday, it was in the mail. FedEx. Yeah. Oh, so That's what I'm talking about, man. There we go, baby. Rescue, right? Those who are watching us on Facebook, we got the the rescue. So that way I'm not illegal. My wife, she just saw it for the first time right as I was walking out because I didn't show her before because I'm smart. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, she's like, why didn't you get one that said police? I'm like, because that would be illegal because I'm not a cop. But mm-hmm. I can say rescue and it looks official. Yeah. So. Is is rescue, is that Velcro? Yeah. Or is that printed on? Oh, so you can take that off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You bet, baby. I could put on police if I had one. Probably get mm-hmm. it at the gun show next time. <laughs> nice. It's so, awesome. Yeah. It is awesome. It looks good too, man. It looks actually looks comfortable with the wide straps and everything. Like, well, it's got the the bulletproof sides. It's uh, it's meant because I it's it, there's a two part to this, right? So I got the other part. The the I like to call it the inner. It's not the inner, but it's like. Uh, Actually, I, I should say that the soft plate is on here, and then you got the ceramic plate. It's on the the other part that you can um, wear underneath a shirt. Like I, I deliberately got white so that way I could wear it underneath a, a dress shirt if I was going out someplace. Nice. And didn't I mean? But still, you look. I mean, I'm already a big guy. But then when you're wearing that, you just look huge, right? So, I mean, I, I think it's kind of hard not to tell you got something going on if you're wearing yeah. it. But so this yeah. is designed. So, I mean, when you've got that other on, it's actually, I mean, you feel like freaking Juggernaut from Marvel Comics. You just feel huge. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, I guess, I would, I'm not worried about it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be just <laughs> fine. Like, that's what you feel like. <laughs> It does give you like this. Uh, well, it's there. There's a bulkiness to it, at least with mine. And my plates have some curve to them, but they're not like the full on like shaped to your body curve. And so you just like you feel some bulkiness there. Yeah, um, yeah I get that. But especially when you double layer it, like yours is designed to do. And the You're reason I there. got that is because I was like, it's almost like. It's almost like having two bulletproof kits. Yeah, like, and yeah. they tell you, look, you don't get the full four pr- level four protection unless you're wearing both in yeah. combination. But I'm like, it's still going to have some protection. And I'm like, you know, if I had to like throw one on my wife, the other on me, okay, you know, it's not ideal, but it would be protection. And then the kids, they just got to fend for themselves, man. They just, they better be quick. And run fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right, man. Well, I'm excited for you. I'm glad it finally made it in. Dude, I'm telling you, all it took was bitching about them on the podcast. You know what? We're going to have to get, like, we're going to have to get people to come to us with a, hey, Optics Planet hasn't gotten back to me yet. <laughs> we'll be like, how dare you, Optics Planet? <laughs> like, I love it, man. I love we'll, it. We'll, we'll, we'll expediate deliveries. Um. Hey, oh, Black Ops is asking. uh, He's like, hey, I missed the update. New kit. Uh, Yeah, man. uh, We uh, Pete finally got his body armor in from Safe Light. So anybody who's just joining us, um, body armor is in. Pete is ready to rock. That's right. I'm ready. I'm I'm good to go. Kind of makes me want to shoot myself just to see if it works. (laughs) do Do you remember a few years ago when the two guys got drunk and they were shooting each other with bulletproof vests on, and they got they got in trouble? Yeah, they got they got arrested and like I forget who it was. Somebody posted like, "I'm sorry, I thought this was America." Because <laughs> like, well, let's okay. be honest, that scares me, but it also sounds kind of fun. Please, the don't guy do who that. invented bulletproof vests. I don't know if you remember this because I've talked about it as a marketer. Like he went around to police departments and he had to demonstrate to them 
that it worked. And so he would literally hold a gun out in front of him, shoot himself. And I remember seeing this on video. And then all of a sudden he quickly turns the gun around and he had some bowling pins, you know, up and he was like shooting the bowling pins, showing, you know, look, I'm fine. He ended up like visiting so many different police departments. Cause again, this is before body armor was the thing. And he had shot himself over 260 times to demonstrate, but it, it worked. Right. Cause everyone's like, yeah. dude, dude just shot himself and he's fine. Uh, I'll take one. <laughs> I mean, it was, yeah. From a marketing yeah. standpoint, it's what we call demonstration, right? You're demonstrating the value of your goods. Dude, I mean, when you're talking to people who are like, I'm afraid I'm going to get shot. Uh, dude, you shot himself. Yeah, I'm going to buy that. Yeah. That work. And was this, was that Kevlar? So was was it the yeah. soft? It was Kevlar. So like to me, the so, there's something scarier about the soft. It's oh. hard to imagine that it's going to stop a bullet, even though like you see all the demonstration, you know it does. So like that just took some toughness there and you're feeling it like that's the thing it's kevlar you gotta be bruising hard yeah yeah that's um yeah that's oh i'm just thinking now like do you see what cowboy just wrote no i'm gonna go to the reserves next time we go train that's that's awesome (laughs) uh Cameron just mentioned he got a spartan systems level three a little bit ago wait well not cameron black ops sorry um heavy but better than nothing yeah man um i'm rocking a, re- a level three for mine it's not spartan uh it's hesco but i man good level three still like i mean some of these level threes were still designed to stop five five six and um most of it will do five five six right some of it will even stop green tips um and so that's man and sometimes your price or your price your weight is still lower than a level four so um that's pretty cool black ops way to go man we got a whole cadre here (laughs) ready ready to rock with the uh with the plate carriers man i think that's awesome i'm just waiting for them to outlaw it make i know well um buddy of mine who i'm not sure listens to the show um man if he does we need to get a call sign for him but uh, he and I were discussing the situation in the world and things going on, and um, he's he's getting himself kitted up. And so we were talking about body armor, and he messaged me. I guess he was getting ready to buy some, and he messaged me. He's like, hey, wait, is anybody tracking this right now? Do I have to worry about them coming after me for this? And I'm like, well, honestly, like there are some places that are talking about regulating body armor, and I'm yeah sure that could happen i mean right now that's pretty low on the radar you gotta buy it in person you can't buy it on the internet and where is that i think it's connecticut Connecticut. that's interesting man so um yeah we could start getting tracked because of that but but think about it body armor is 100 percent a defensive item and they want to outlaw something that's 100 percent defensive in nature yeah yeah and of course, you're going to yeah. say, well, bad guys are going to use it and then we can't kill them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But good guys are going to use it so they can't get killed by the bad guys. And you yeah. might be the bad guy that they're afraid is going to kill. Yeah. 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 Oh, this reminds me of so many things. Oh, we got more to talk about them than I, than I thought about. So we, uh, oh, yes. Um, yeah. Just, you got me pumped Go now. Go for it. Um, well, I think, um, so speaking of such things, did you see the video of the, he's a Polish pastor in Canada, in Alberta, Cal- Canada, right? Calgary, which is in the Alberta now. And it was in Alberta that pastor James Coates got arrested for meeting with his church. Uh, for those of you guys who are not familiar uh, in Alberta, they have a 15, not 50, but 15. That's a one, five percent capacity uh, restriction on churches. So you can't, meet at more than 15% capacity. So just imagine if your church has a hundred people seating capacity, you're only allowed 15 people. And um, so these pastors are just like, screw you, we're going to have church. Um, And their infection rate is way down. In fact, maybe is to nothing. Yeah. It's Um, nothing like what it is in America. Yeah. I mean, it's super, super low. And so they're just meeting. Well, then uh, apparently I don't think it was Sunday morning uh, because he was mentioning Passover. Um, so sorry, I've got, uh, somebody stuck their head in. Um, but, um, man, the police came in without a warrant just to harass the church. 
And you hear this guy in this Polish accent in Canada. He's like, you don't understand English. Get out of your Nazi. And he's like, get out of your Gestapo. I'm calling him Nazi. <laughs> no Gestapo here. No Gestapo here. <laughs> Man, and you know what? You could see that, like, they didn't know quite what to do. And he just noticed he just kept yelling at them and rightly calling them Nazi fascists um, until they got it got out of there. And he just kept at it. And so, like, I um, I quoted I shared it and quoted a quote from uh, from John Calvin races. Every pastor needs a uh, needs one voice for calling the sheep and one voice for running off wolves and thieves. And uh, good on him, Pastor. I know some people are like, well, you shouldn't have called them names and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, listen, I hear that crap so many times where somebody defends somebody and they're like, well, they could have been it nicer. I'm like, he had they weren't going to leave. They like, weren't going to They were leave. not turning around when he started yelling at them. And he had we're talking about people who were in there to threaten his flock. Right. He did the right thing. And you could say, well, maybe he couldn't use this word. Or maybe he shouldn't. Have done it. I don't care. Like. Lazy pansies are the ones that call out the guy who actually stood up and protected, right? And so I was so proud of that pastor. I would actually point out, um, we are talking about people who are being very fascist um, in their application of rules. They are socialist. <laughs> um, I would argue that to some degree, you do have some national socialism going on there. <laughs> and so I think the Nazi thing fits. Um, and it, he just did such a great job running them off. But Man, if they would linger that long, there was a there was a chunk of we're not talking about one or two cops. No. Um, I didn't get it. I didn't get a count, but I mean, worker six, and, eight. Uh, yeah. A healthcare worker and a bunch of cops. Yeah. He's like, so I'll um, tell you something. He's like, I don't want to hear it. Go. <laughs> yeah. That is the right response, because here's the thing. This anytime you have a cop in that situation without a warrant, if you engage him or her, you're actually inviting more discussion. What you need to say is like, get the heck out of here. This is not your property. And he was right to say, don't come back without a warrant. Like, get out of here. Come back with a warrant. Um, yeah, see, I, don't know he, the, I, don't, I don't know Canadian laws. I don't know I don't how anything works there. I know they don't have the same uh, freedoms that we have by any means. I mean, yeah. gun rights, uh, no bill of rights for them. Yeah. Um, it's, a, yeah. It's, a different, it's a different animal, so... It really is. Well, there's things are kind of confusing, too, because the, there's a Canadian charter that is something loosely akin to a um, uh, to a constitution, but it's new. It's it's a few years old. And there's a lot of debate as to how it's to be applied. It, there's a lot of messy stuff going on in Canada. But uh, but and I would argue that, like, the cops didn't have any business being there, even if they had a um, you know, a quote unquote legal reason to be there. I think he was right to still try to run him off. Um, he did a great job, um, should be lauded and applauded. Well, and, considering um, that yeah. the COVID up there is nothing like what it is here. Yeah. Like it is far worse in Canada than even California. And that's hard for me to believe because yeah. we got nothing but Nazis running this place. So, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, um, hold on. Did I lose you? You still there? Um, Oh, what in the world? You're back. You're back. Am I back? All right. Sorry. Um, I hit the button the wrong. Anyway, um, so all that said, when we start talking about things like defensive tools like body armor that they're trying to regulate, people like that, that want to show up and harass somebody in church on Sunday morning, on or it might not have been Sunday, but it was Easter weekend for crying out loud. Um, those are the people that don't want you to have body armor. And uh, so it is right to have body armor. And at a time when they're starting to say, hey, we want to eliminate your own ability to, to defend yourself. And that's fully defend. That's the time when you're going to need it the most. So, men, buy, a, buy body armor, everybody. Buy some 308. Um, keeping in mind also that cops are probably only going to have 3A uh, armor. So, like, you need to get yourself some 308 for totally unrelated reasons. Anyway. Totally um, unrelated 100%. Yeah. Not, that was just, you were saying different facts and they well, are no way tied together. Completely, completely unrelated facts for a whole lot of reasons. And in seriousness, like it's, it's, it's so expensive to buy five, five, six ammo right now. You better get some 308 because you're already spending more. Might as well get some 308 and you have another, you have kind of a specialty kind of ammo. And uh, I don't know if people didn't know this, but, um, oh, it's uh, 7.62 by what is it? Five, four. Uh, that is effectively 308. So the the large, 
I didn't realize this either, but apparently it's it's legit. Um, I I checked it out a little bit. The, so the larger Soviet round is 308. It is you cha- I mean, it's called something different, but it'll it'll chamber in your 308. Now I'm going to feel a lot better running my own actual American 308. But um, yeah, like the stuff that goes in the Dragonov, you know, what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, check it out. Uh, check check out the stats on that. Somebody who knows better than me, but um, I am. Um, yeah, my buddy, my buddy's stocking up on the Russian stuff <laughs> to fire out of his 308. I, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. So, um, hey, uh, I got a quick little review here I'm going to give to yeah. uh, to Cutting Edge. Can, Ooh, nice. I don't know if you can see. Uh, it's, kinda, it's not really it, it, showing up It there. focused in for like a second and then. But uh, this is, uh, you know, you got to love Looking the, uh, good. the automatic blade there. That Which is, is cool. funny because um, it's an Arizona company, right? So he could only bring this size to California because this is legal in California, whereas their full size blades in Arizona are not legal here in California. And I was like, well, then I want it just because it's going to piss off every liberal in California. <laughs> So nice. I was like, yeah, that's going to be my new, my new carry knife right there. Just a little uh, automatic blade for you. And uh, what a cool looking blade too. Well, you know, what's cool about this particular company, supposedly, right? I haven't put this to the test. Uh, they will for life sharpen the blade for you. Um, anytime you want to bring it by or you can mail it to them. They'll sharpen it, send it back. Uh, if you break it for any reason, he goes, even if you just decide, hey, I'm going to shove this in between a couple pieces of concrete and snap the blade off, they'll replace it. So lifetime warranty oh, on this brand, supposed, right? I'm saying supposed because, you know, yeah, put it to the test. They've been around for 19 years, so it's still a young company, uh, but they're all handmade, all handmade uh, auto wow. made knives. So what's the name of the brand again? Cutting Edge. Of course. Oh, yeah, um, exactly. Of course. And they're out of Arizona. Out of Arizona. They got a couple of different shops in Arizona. And, and uh, of course, I saw them at the, the gun show. And uh, as I was there with my son, and, and he wanted a fossil that cost $5. I wanted a knife that cost 100 I figured that was a good deal. <laughs> Pretty good. And, Pretty good. And I used the government's money to buy it. Just, you know, because I figured, hey, why not? Why not use it? Why not use Uncle Sam's money? Why use my hey. own? If he's going to give money um, and and take it, you know, he's going to take it back in taxes later. So might as well just go for it, man. That's what I'm Heck saying. Yeah. So we need to talk about what um, I've got a product review. I'll save till the end. But um, I want to hear we, we got to talk about what everybody is using their stimulus money for, because the the stimmy dollars, man, are supporting the Second Amendment. Tell they us a little bit. I don't know if you have any actual stats on us, but um, tell us what's going on. Well, I was uh, reading some articles, and it's just the the background checks that the FBI is processing for new gun owners. It just keeps going up, like it's just been insane. The Love amount, it. and and so now people are saying, "Hey, you know what? People are using the stimmy money. That's that they're buying Bitcoin, <laughs> and they're buying guns." And I'm like, "I love America." This is the best <laughs> country in the world. It's awesome. I love it. Well, so thinking about then, this is this is where I would love to have a better handle on what's about to happen in the next few years. Um, think five years in the future. What's this going to look like? And what's incredible to me is that, I mean, as you say, people are buying Bitcoin. Um, for crying out loud, Tesla is going to start taking Bitcoin for payment, all right? And they're like, "Hey, and by the way, we're not going to be transferring this back into money. We're gonna, we're gonna run, we're gonna use this to run the company." Like those kinds of things are exciting. And then you add to it all the gun purchases, the ammo purchases. Um, I mean, like this is this is exciting. And my hope is that this is putting a mindset in people that they're like, hey, we don't need the government to do a whole bunch of the crap that they've been doing. And so when stimulus money uh, starts going to this kind of stuff, this uh, this gets me excited. I'm really intrigued. I'm watching certain states like Missouri say, hey, we're not going to we're not going to stand for gun laws. 
Um, in West Virginia, they're in the process of passing a law that would essentially invalidate any type of uh, enforcement of federal gun laws. Uh, similar states doing things like that. For out loud, I already mentioned West Virginia is in the process of trying to eliminate the income tax, the state income tax. Um, we're just seeing some really cool, what I would argue, very American things happening as our national government is going way off the rails. And so whatever's about to happen, um, I'm much more optimistic about than I was even a year ago. Uh, so exciting times, my brothers. Here's a great headline. This is from March 14th from CNN, right? Liberal CNN. Headline mm -hmm. is, Americans bought guns in record numbers in 2020 during a year of unrest and the surge is continuing, <laughs> which you got to love. And then they go yeah. into the stats here. Uh, it's a 65% increase compared to 2019. I mean, 65%. I mean, good night. That's, that's a big increase. Uh, in March, the FBI conducted more than 3.7 million background checks, a month that overlapped with the start of the pandemic lockdowns. That's more than a million additional background checks than were conducted in March 2019. And then it even goes on. Okay, uh, uh, 3.9 million background checks in June, 2.6 in July. That's compared to 2.3 and 2 million the previous year. So, I mean, Man. I'm talking just massive, massive gun buying going on. And again, that means these are people who are buying direct from dealers and has nothing to do with the majority of private party transfers where yeah. you don't need a background check. Now, states like California, where you need a background check, you know, we know all the numbers for California. But um, I, yeah. that, if I lived in a free state, the uh, only way I'd be buying guns is private party. Yeah, like, literally, I wouldn't be buying from a dealer ever. Unfortunately, for yeah. the dealer, it's like I don't, I don't want the government knowing everything I got. Yeah, you ain't kidding, man. Um, this is such an exciting time, man. Buying the guns, man. Well, so uh, what I'm wondering then is how many private transfers are happening for new gun owners. Um, I'm wondering how that works because I know a lot of new gun owners. Like, they wouldn't know. They probably wouldn't know, right? They yeah. And so, like, I'm thinking, it, I'm guessing most new gun owners are going to go to the shop down the street, right? Unless um, they're like my buddies who's like, hey, we can't buy a gun anywhere. Would you sell me one? Yeah. So, and we might have had some of that, like that. But it, it, I would love to get an estimate on how much of that, because I'm thinking, like, uh, I'm just curious, I guess. Um, I've, I've got a few friends that, like, they were buying their first gun guns. So like, you know, they had hunting guns or whatever, but they were buying their first either concealed carry or whatever. And they all went to shops. Um, they usually ask me for advice before, but, um, and I guess theoretically they could ask me about buying, but I wasn't going to sell them any, anything right. that I had, right. <laughs> you know, uh, hypothetically in Minecraft, because I don't have any guns personally, right? All got um, lost in the boating accident. It's been a shame. Man, yeah, it's so tragic. The boats. Yeah, well, on Lake Erie, man, Lake Erie has real choppy waters, man. And um, and then the ice fishing, you go ice fishing in Lake Erie and like just stuff falls right down through that hole. It's a whole mess how much that happens. You got to have your concealed carry out there when you're out on Lake Erie because, you know, I mean, polar bears stuff polar bears. down from Canada. Yeah. Um, you got to be ready. Um, oh, Black Ops is asking us if we've uh, purchased our printers yet. Um, hey, that's a good question. It's and none of um, your business, Black Ops. <laughs> <laughs> that's, um, what I, I, yeah, that's, uh, I, <laughs> I might, uh, I got, I might I got a color it. laser jet. I mean, is that what you mean? Is that the thing you're talking about? <laughs> I'd like to buy a 3d printer in a straw sale. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, I'd be like, I'll ask my buddy. I'm like, Hey, I'm going to need to borrow your 3d printer. You know printer what? But, That's yeah. actually a good use for uh, the stimmy money. Go buy yeah, the ghost gunner. I'm just saying that's actually like really good use of, of your stimmy money right there. Really, really good use. Become well, an FFL. And do do that, um, do what that homeboy in in uh was doing out in, in California where you could come over and make your own AR build. Remember that? And he got in some trouble and and barely made it out, right? 
Um, but like, could you do that with 3D printing? Could you be like, well, I'm not gonna make you a lower. That wouldn't be okay. But you want to come by and press print the button at my house. There's the button you need to press. I think that would be hilarious. And that that sounds legal to me. I'm not a lawyer, but that sure yeah, sounds the, legal. Yeah, the to government. Me. See, here's the problem, man. The government does not care about law. They care about what they want. So they're gonna twist anything. I mean, you just got to know, like, I honestly, the guys who do that, I think they're crazy, especially here in California. I'm like, you're, you're, you're toast in California. Yeah. This is, you're nuts to be yeah. doing anything even close to that in California. And I don't know how you would keep something like that on the down low and still like turn it into a real business. Cause like, yeah, you're, you're going to go to, you're going to go to jail. <laughs> They're going to find stuff. Oh. So I, in jail. seriousness, I think doing it as a business would be a terrible idea, but, I, there has to be, I, I doubt you'd get too much heat for printing with like with your buddy. Like you come oh, no, over and like, like all. I think you start with selling and whatever, doing it on a large scale. But like to me, that like if I'm if I buy a printer and you know, um, <laughs> Black Ops is like, yeah, definitely not legal here in California. <laughs> um, but uh, that's yeah, I'm I'm thinking that you could do that with your buddies and man, I would show up and be like, Hey man, here's, here's some, uh, some of the, whatever you call it, filament or whatever. And let's, let's print, um, yeah. hypothetically in Minecraft. Cause I'm not doing that for any reason. Um, but you could do that. I'm, I'm betting it would be all right. I, I so. really like the idea of some of those, uh, AR CNC machines. I mean, I, I really like that. Except that, I mean, it, it's so easy with the 80 percenters to make an AR just with uh, a router. I mean, it's kind of like, do I need to spend two grand on the machine? Uh, do I need that? I mean, really, how many lowers am I going to print? <laughs> you know, it's. Eh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. CNC machine, man. So um, as we're talking about lowers and printing and so forth. Um, are you familiar with this 17 design integrated folding AR billet lower receiver? I'm reading it off the website. Have you heard about this? It's an integrated, uh, it's a lower. So you know how they make the, um, the ARs that fold, right? Um, so they've made a system now where it is integrated into the lower. So it's not like a little clip and an extra you put on, like it's your lower. It's like a $300 lower, which isn't crazy money, um, but it is a really, really solid system for swinging, uh, for kind of swinging it open, swinging it back. Um, definitely check it out. Primary Arms has it right now, 300 bucks, and it is in stock. I have a feeling this is going to be my next build, brothers. Um, I have a friend of mine um, who needs his own. Man, I got all these friends that I don't have call signs for, uh, but uh, he's got one. He's starting to build with this one. Uh, he's going to do it in an 11-inch pistol. Uh, or 11 and a half inch or whatever. And um, I'm really liking it because uh, let's see you do that in an 11 inch pistol. And like, I don't know, how long is a, how long is a lower? Um, I don't six know. inches. Um, so you could have in, let's say six inches. I don't think it's even that much max. It's maybe six inches. So six inches plus the 12 inches, you've got an 18 inch thing once it's folded, right? That'll go in a backpack. Uh, you do that as a, a pistol so that you can put it in a backpack. Um, you've got the ultimate trunk gun. And um, I'm pretty intrigued about the whole thing. Um, I'm probably, I'm looking, I think I'd like to do a build like that. We'll, we'll see. Um, but check it out. Uh, folding, integrated folding lower receiver. Worth checking out. Um, of course, not as cool as like, you know, forging your own billet and, you know, using a CNC machine to route out the real thing. But still cool. I love the Facebook post that you uh, you mentioned my name in. You're like, man, the ATF is really trying to get people, aren't they? And it was like, <laughs> hey, look at our new fuel filter. <laughs> and, uh, the baffles on this fuel filter. And it's like, dude, seriously, come on. <laughs> they were, yeah. I love how they're like, now here's the difference between a suppressor and a fuel filter. And you can have a fuel filter. And I'm like, this is the ATF dangling a carrot. Um, yeah. <clears throat> So, oh, it scares me a little bit that those are out there because I'll be honest, it was still tempting. I'm like, man, that's so freaking cheap, man. I could get one of those. Yeah, and I'm like, no. Thing, right. Because it's cheap, you know, it's going to cost more later. Like, 
exactly that's just right. the way it is. Yeah, it costs more as in like yep. <laughs> 15 years more. <laughs> Well, that's the thing. Like, if I lived in a free state that could have suppressors, I'd absolutely have one. But like I said, I I would make my own um, for a lot of different reasons. One, it's actually quicker from what I'm told to get the ATF approval when you're you're making it. Is it? That's interesting. Yeah, I've I've been told that by lots of different sources. I don't know if it's true because we can't have any NFA items here in California. But I would really like to have a suppressor. And then, like, if I lived in a free state, I'd have an AR pistol suppressed, and that would be my home defense weapon. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, we don't get to have that stuff here. So I got to I gotta wait till I go to free states. Like, later we're going to Nevada, and I'm thinking I might go to the gun range out there and and uh, try out some of the full auto stuff that they got. Oh, well, yeah. You know. Because that's super that. fun. Yeah, it's not? so fun too. It's I'm not sure when I would ever use that, but it's fun. Like just at a range, it's fun. Um, <laughs> Black Ops is telling us telling us links to go to for print material. You're so you're tempting us. <laughs> this is so good. I gotta pull up Tor browser and copy that right over. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So um, can I share another product that, yeah. um, so I've been hearing about some dudes in gun industry have been talking to me about Kanai Pro Gear spelled C-A-N-N-A-E. So a lot of people will say Kanai Pro Gear. I think it's actually pronounced Kanai, um, but I uh, heard a little bit about it. And then um, I got on their, uh, on their text feed and just Pete, you should follow their, you should get in their, you know, their text, um, not chat, but their text marketing system. Because they market completely by memes and um, they have these awesome deals and they do things like mystery boxes for a hundred bucks and the mystery box will, uh, will be guaranteed a hundred dollars worth of stuff, right? Usually backpacks or whatever, guarantee a hundred dollars worth of stuff, but you might get upgraded to like a $150 pack or they might throw in actual body armor and you just never know that there's uh, like, it's a mystery box. So you're going to get your money's worth, but you might get more than you bargained for. Um, but they're running these deals on their on their packs, and I'm I'm hearing good stuff. And it's, you know, Grand Thumb has been using a Kane Pro Phalanx backpack, um, which is like designed to go over your body armor, so it's like your three day assault pack. Um, and uh, which, by the way, I've got an assault pack that does not fit well over my armor, and so it's probably going to be my next pack buy. Um, but anyway, I ordered, uh, this is, um, oh, I'm going to draw a blank on it. This is like the really small pack from Kanai. Um, nothing, nothing too fancy other than a few little nice things. Um, it's designed to be small. It's a roll top, so I can actually get a lot more in here. And then it's got cinch straps around here to tighten it up. It's got molly webbing, got whatever, um, a little handle on the bottom, handle on the top, little pouch inside for the uh, hydration pack. And uh, it comes with its own little bag, so I can roll this thing up and stick it in a tiny little bag. So it can be like my secondary. Like maybe I put put this in an assault pack as a mini uh, mini or something like that, or great for hiking. Like as soon as we get off the call here today, I'm taking the kids hiking. This is going with me. Uh, I've got an MRE in here. Uh, I've got a whole bunch of survival gear. And actually, I can survive pretty well on what I've got in this thing. Of course, it's got some Velcro for some morale patches, whatever. Got my arrow precision on there. Uh, here's the thing, though. I bought this thing for 35 bucks. Like, that's crazy cheap. And this is this is legit rip stop. This is not, I mean, like, you know, it's, it's hard to tell about some backpacks. And then you get them and you're like, ooh, that seems going to come loose or whatever. Right. This is really well made. I have a lot of backpacks. And I have, including some military issue, high-end, like, designed to last a really long time this is a intentionally a tiny little dinky backpack it's still probably close to the best made backpack i own uh the one that i have that's better is i have the marine corps uh not alice but um whatever it's with the molly webbing and it is super super rugged it might barely have an edge out on this thing but i am sold on this and so here's what's really great. They started running a deal for a pack of two of these for 50 bucks. Wow. So I'm like, you know what? If I, for crying out loud, if this was like the little extra bag that I kept my, um, my survival gear in the back of the car in for 25 bucks, that's awesome. It is holding up. I'm putting it through. I've already tested it out a little bit. Um, 
And um, so I'm going to go ahead and recommend them. I'm about to buy the Phalanx pack um, because it's awesome. And uh, actually, I think I'm going to do, I think I'm going to gamble and I'm going to do the mystery box and see what I get. And um, I already bought two more of these for my kids. Um, so anyway, I'm just going to recommend some Kanai Pro gear. Um, and actually, Black Ops is on here. He says he's got a pack from them. It's my hiking loadout now. Heck yeah, man. I would actually love to hear which one it was that you got. Um, but the pros are starting to recommend this, not just starting, I'm seeing them recommend a lot of this stuff and, um, I am impressed. So definitely worth checking out some Kanai, check their deals right now. Um, cause I mean, even their, their normal prices are relatively low compared to the high quality you're getting, but right now their deals are super low. So, um, they're just, I don't know, they're just stimulus checks, man. They're, <laughs> they're making bank right now. So, um, yeah, man. So definitely worth checking out everybody. I love it. I love it. Cool. Well, hey, look, guys, uh, I actually got to get going because I got uh, some crazy stuff going on this morning. But if you aren't in our Telegram group, Telegram, Telegraph, whatever the name of the stinking group is. Here's. Oh, a, um, yeah, I can never remember. Right. Uh, yeah. Send us a text. You send the keyword hero, H-E-R-O, to 850-990-2020, 850-990-2020. And uh, that'll go through and get you added to the groups. So that way you can check out our, our memes, which is really what we post mostly. Every once in a while, a good article, something that's going on that you need to be aware of. But uh, yeah. most of the time, we're posting memes because it makes us laugh. And pretty much, it's all about us. It's all about what Dan and I want to, to make each other laugh over. So, And the memes are good for your soul. Yes. It's just face facts. The memes are just good for us. I get, I've got grandmas that I know that are just like, man, these memes are really helping in this dark time. And I'm like, yes, this is the ministry of memes. We're bringing the memes to you. Um, yeah. So actually, so when you're like, hey, I've got the number, I'm going to text in. And you're like, what is it that I'm supposed to text in? What's that word? Then you think of then think of all the meme lords and you're going to be like, oh yeah, hero, hero is what I text in. And then you'll be on the list. You'll get the link. You'll be in. And it really is fun in there, man. Like we're, we're having a ball, some good yeah. stuff. We even share a few on the spicy side, you know, there's a couple of spicy memes. Cause we can share them there. We can't put them anywhere else. I know. I can't put them on <laughs> Facebook most of the time. I shared a couple of spicy ones recently that I'm like, hmm. and then I was checking the door to see if the, you know, the ATF had showed up and they didn't. So it still reminds me of my buddy with his shirt that says save the dogs abolish the atf (laughs) such a good one or uh another one and it might be can i pro gear that has this it's uh it's an ewok and it just says insurgent (laughs) so good it's good stuff so anyway you guys um well hey let me get my plug for lake erie arms uh you guys uh we continue to have training we actually just added uh, recently a CCW refresher course. Um, and so if you've got your permit, uh, but you haven't done a lot of training or you're like, wait a minute, what were the laws on this? What's, what's, how's it all look? Um, definitely we're checking that one out. Plenty of other stuff. And of course we're staying, staying stocked with guns and ammo. <laughs> so, um, I've got, a, I got a visitor sneaking up behind me. Um, so, uh, he's ready to go hiking in clearly in a mine he's West Virginian. Anyway, uh, check out learms.net. Um, and we will see you in the store sometime. All right, cool. All right, guys, we'll talk to you next week. Take care, everybody. Bye. All right. Bye. You've been listening to the From Concealment Podcast with Pete Mitchell and Dan Sams. Be sure to tune in next week for more gun talk. Also, check out the From Concealment website for more shooting-related goodness at fromconcealment.com.